Welcome everyone to the session uh, of marketing research and analysis. Uh, in the last uh, session we had discussed about uh, hypothesis, we had introduced the subject of hypothesis. So, uh, what exactly is an hypothesis and uh, uh, why it is uh, very so important for any researcher. So, uh, hypothesis is basically as we understand is an assumption. So, as in normally we say uh, uh, I, hypoth I hypothesized that this is this is going to happen, I am hypothesis, uh, my hypothesis that today it might rain uh, or uh, I have a hypothesis that uh, um, you know uh, this uh, new uh, machine will work better than the old machine. So, these are basically that means uh, the thing has not happened uh, and we are trying to predict, we are trying to say something in the positive or negative right. So, uh, hypothesis is basically an assumption as we understand. So, the question is, <coughs> so when we did it, we said that there are two types of basically any hypothesis uh, of two types. So, the null and the alternate. So, the null uh, basically we said is uh, one where the, uh, the researcher follows the base, maintains the status quo. That means, something uh, is uh, would happen what it is uh, normally happening, right. Uh, or it is a case of an equal to that means, uh, uh, two things are uh, equal and uh, till we have not proven it. So, the nullness says ki they are equal to. So, it is a case of basically that is why it says it is a case of equal to case. So, the let us say the mean of two groups is equal to or the intelligence of two people uh, is equal to or same right. So, the word same equal to comes into the null. On the other hand alternate is something which is not the null or against the null you can say right. So, suppose the researcher says uh, wants to know ki whether the intelligence of two people are same or uh, not same. So, the null says it is same and the alternate says you know they are not same. So, they are not equal to. So, this is a case of equal to this is a case of not equal to ok. And uh, the most important thing is that in most of the researches we say with we uh, we want to disprove the null hypothesis. We want to disprove or reject the null hypothesis. Why? The question is very simple because <coughs> any researcher if, if he wants to accept the status quo what is happening would happen then what is the point of doing a research. So, in order to have an outcome which is significant or effective uh, it, whether it, uh, you know it is effective in that those cases we always like to uh, check the more important thing is uh, the alternate for us right. That is why if you uh, if you read research papers please uh, understand the hypothesis that you see on those research papers written on those research papers are basically they are not the null hypothesis they are the alternative uh, hypothesis right. This is the hypothesis that the researcher actually wants to claim or uh, uh, check ok. Now, let us get into the subject. During hypothesis testing in the last session also I discussed there are basically several steps to check the hypothesis. So, what are the steps? So, first we uh, one has to check for the basic assumptions okay, of a normal distribution. So, assumptions of a normal distribution right that means the data behaves in a normal uh, uh, manner right it, it behaves uh, 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 similar to a normal distribution right. Then we said uh, you need to uh, did, uh, you know check the tail of a test the direction of a test right direct direction of a test of a test. So, whether it is a one tail uh, one or two tail test ok two tailed. Then we said the researcher has to be sure ki at what level of significance it wants to work right. Now, significance level has to be uh, decided by the researcher. Now, when I am saying the significance level one can uh, understand it as the alpha right. So, if you remember in the alpha we said this is the chance that the that a uh, hypothesis which is correct is will be still rejected right. A the chances of rejecting a true hypothesis uh, is called alpha rather the other side is beta which was the chance of accepting a false hypothesis ok. So, once we do the significance then we calculate the statistic. Now, what is the statistic here? Now, the statistics means we say the z or t statistic right we calculate the z or t statistic. So, uh, that means as how do we calculate now z uh, at z if you remember 
z or t whatever if you see uh, is equal to x which is the uh, uh, x minus mu right upon the standard error right this was the formula. So, uh, same thing will happen uh, also applicable for t the only difference between a z and a t distribution I will explain uh, is that to start with you have to understand that a z distribution uh, or a z uh, test is used when the sample size is large when sample size is large ok. T is used T is used when sample size is small is small or up to 30 up to 30 ok 30. If your sample size is small up to 30 then uh, we will use a T test ok. <coughs> Let us see. So, once you have done with the statistic the final step comes is to uh, compare the compare compare I think uh, it, it will not be visible if I write here maybe uh, I will write it at the top this this point I am writing here. So, it is visibility will be there. Uh, so, the fifth point compare the statistic the uh, z statistic z or t statistic with the critical value the critical value. Now, critical value is something that you can find from the z or t table at the end of any book or you can just google out and you can see ki what is the value. Now, this is the outline. <coughs> so, uh, let me uh, uh, go through it. So, we are, we are getting into <coughs> the logic of hypothesis testing. So, the 5 step model which I just said. So, hypothesis testing for single sample means one sample or it could be uh, more than one sample sample proportions basically uh, hypothesis this is the when you talk about z or t there are two ways of understanding <coughs> the hypothesis testing is called as a test of means or proportions right what does it mean it says it is a test of means or proportions that means what uh, to base let us understand let us go to the basic meaning what does hypothesis testing actually say <coughs> through a hypothesis testing we are actually trying to say that there is a significant difference between the sample mean and the population mean or there is not a significant difference as good as it that means in if i still break it uh, to a more uh, you know elementary level it means ki can i say that from a sample mean that this sample comes from a particular population or not is it is the sample a part of the population or it is some other sample it is not related to the population we are trying to actually test this thing right in any uh, hypothesis testing. <coughs> so, but the question is when we are taking understanding it from the terms of mean right. So, uh, we can uh, check it from the terms of mean. Uh, so, uh, what is happening in the normal distribution we said ki basically we are bothered about the mean right. So, that is why if we take the mean of the sample and we take the sample population sample uh, mean and then we say is it significant some uh, relationship is there or not or if the suppose there is something is it by chance or uh, it is the some it is uh, it would happen again and again as good as that. So, uh, uh, one is uh, test of means the other is as I said test of proportions right. So, proportions as we understand from mathematics right. So, proportions are something which is in the form of p by uh, p and q right. So, so it is a ratio basically we say uh, right. So, what is happening we are trying to see ki whether uh, if there is no mean and we only have a idea ki what percentage of the population it is there or not there can in such situations also can we test a hypothesis now yes. So, by in those cases when you do not have the mean you can use the proportion ok. Let us see I have an example I will show you. So, uh, let us say hypothesis uh, testing is designed to detect the significant differences as I said that did not occur by random chance. So, if there is a significant difference we are saying there is a significant difference between the population mean and the population mean and the let us say sample mean let us say ok. Now, we are saying that this significant difference that is happen will happen is not one which has happened due to some chance element it is 
actually it has happened right. So, to claim or to test this we are doing a hypothesis test right. So, there are two three types of uh, test basically ok. Now, if you uh, uh, let me rub this off I am not getting space. So, uh, uh, basically as I said the z and the t these two are more or less the same thing more or less the same thing right. If you look into any statistical software or anything you would not see a z test because that it is that z is nothing but an uh, you know uh, is, is an extension of the t only right. So, only thing is that t is small and this is large right this is large. So, uh, this is sir, around 30 as I said. So, what happens is how does the distribution look like? Now, if you take a t distribution the t distribution the curve is something like this ok. Now, what I mean uh, that means what if you look at the kurtosis you know the kurtosis of the uh, the height the peakedness of the curve the t test the t distribution is a more flatter is more flatter than the z distribution the z distribution is more or less it is it is normal in nature right but the t is more flat and tapering at the end so what happens in this situation what is basically happening is so we uh, when a t when you extend uh, increase the number of sample size for example okay so as you go on increasing the sample size the t tends to become a z so that means a t and z hardly there would be any difference because when you increase the sample size from 30 to let us say 40, 50, 70, 80, 90, 100 whatever then automatically the t and the z would more or less look same right. So, that is the basic understanding. So, uh, okay. now I was saying so that is why uh, we basically when we talk about the, the t test right what we are doing is t test is of again uh, is of 3 there are 3 basically test one is called one sample t test ok. The second is independent sample t test independent sample ok. The third is dependent sample t test dependent sample ok. So, the t test has been the you can say there are three type of types of tests right. The uh, t test can be explained in terms of the one sample t test, the uh, two sample or independent sample t test and the paired sample t test right. Now, what does it mean? What is this one sample? When you have only one sample right, when you have only one sample and you want to compare, you have to compare against something right, what will you compare? So, you will compare this one sample, the mean of this sample against what? you will compare against some hypothetical some hypothesized mean right. So, that means let us say let us say when you have got a group of uh, sample uh, let us say the intelligence or the score of a group of people right of one section or one class you want to check the you are checking the mean right. So, you found something the mean is let us say 60 percent or something ok. Now, this 60 percent is significantly different from the population mean or not how would you know? And to know that in such cases what we do is basically we compare it against a hypothesized uh, population mean right. So, the hypothesized value hypothesized value hypothesized value that we use is basically something that we compare and we uh, and this value must have has come maybe from some past record or past experience. So, we know that the people in this class generally in a class of let us say marketing research score around let us say 70 percent marks ok. So, now this this is so the something that we have hypothesized from the because of the past records and now whatever we have calculated from that one sample right. Now, we will compare this mean with that hypothesized mean ok value. So, we compare what is saying uh, we compare a random sample ok from a large group to a population ok and this population value is the hypothesized value. Second we compare a sample statistics to a population parameter to see if there is any significant difference or not. So, this is highly useful for those studies 
like example in industries in manufacturing industries where you know they are trying to uh, find uh, they are making suppose some kind of uh, 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 products and they want to check the strength of the products so they will take a sample and they will compare it against some earlier value that they knew ki at least the chair should be able to take the uh, take uh, 250 kilo weight at one time suppose now that 150 kilo is something they are comparing against the sa the sample mean against this 150 okay uh, so let us say this is the problem we have taken. The education department at the university has been accused of grade inflation, they have been accused of grade inflating the grade. So, the education measures have much higher GPS than students in general. Now, people who have taken education as a major, major subject right, have found to be having higher GPS right, than the students in general. Okay. GPS of all the education measures should be compared with the GPS of st all students. There are th generally if you see, so if we have to compare the GPS of all the people who are having education as a measure and the non ones and check them. So, there are thousands of education measures, right, there are thousands of uh, subjects which are uh, in where people have measured, right, and which is too many to interview. It is very difficult to uh, work on such a large sample, okay, large uh, group. How can this be investigated without interviewing all the measures? So, you have around 1000 measures or more than 1000 measures. Now, if I am going on, if I go on checking, then it is like checking the whole population so, and that is not wise and that is not advisable because of the lack of time and money. So, in such a condition, what we will do? Now, what we know, the data says, the average GPA, the average GPA for all the students, for all the students is 2.7. Okay? Now, this is a population parameter, this is a parameter that means this is a population uh, para, uh, statistic. Okay. So, mu is equal to 2.7 if you remember I told you mu is the sign symbol used for population. Now, if you look at this, this is the sample values right, the x bar or the sample mean, sample mean means to the uh, the people who had some kind some measures education measures right, some subjects let us say history, uh, biotechnology or anything right their uh, scores were taken to found to be the sample mean was 3 right the s is the sample standard deviation there is a population standard deviation which we denote by uh, let us say sigma okay now this is the sample standard deviation s is 0 0.7 n is equal to 107 so they have taken 117 uh, candidates to, took their interview to the score and they wanted to do the test okay the question is, is there a difference between the parameter, the population mean, let us say, and the sample mean? If I am asking, is there a difference between the population mean and the sample mean? Yes or no? So, to do that, what we are saying, could the observed difference, if suppose there is a difference we are finding, now 3 minus 2.7 is 0 0.3, but is this difference? actually uh, really there is a difference or it has it is a chance that has by chance it has happened with those samples which we have taken. So, is there any is the uh, difference real we want to check ok. Now, it is saying the sample mean is the same as the population mean two possibilities there are two possibilities actually the sample mean is the same as the population mean that means it is only by chance it has happened this time the difference is trivial and caused by random chance ok or or the difference is actually significant, the difference is real, the education measures are different from all students. That means, the people who have taken education uh, some measures, their mean that they have derived the scores are actually different from uh, the other students. Okay. Now, how, what is the, of the, as I said if you remember, you have to first write the null and the alternate hypothesis. So, the null hypothesis is what is this? The difference is caused by random chance. So, it states there is no significant difference. What does it say? That whatever has happened, if there is a difference of 2.0.3 or something, this is due to a chance okay? and there is no significant difference between the, uh, between the two groups, the sample and the population. In this case, we say that there is no significant difference between the population mean and the sample mean. right? But as a researcher, are you interested to find that? No. So, what are you interested to find? Now, we are interested to find to see that no, the difference is actually real. Now, what does it mean? Now, it says 
that there is a difference that means the population mean the, the difference between the population and the uh, sample is significant in nature right. So, and if you see both explanations cannot be true the two possibilities cannot be true null and alternate at the same time cannot be true only one either it is a difference or there is not a statistical difference ok. So, now which one is true let us see. So, to assuming that the null hypothesis is true right we always test the null hypothesis we always we we will although we are interested to uh, have the uh, alternate, but we are in we will check the null hypothesis what is saying what is the probability of getting the sample mean 3 if h 0 is true and all education measures really have a mean of 2.7. In other words the difference between the means is due to random chance null hypothesis right. If the now what is the probability now he is taken if the probability associated with this difference is less than 0 0.05 reject the null hypothesis. Now, if you remember I had told you in the last session also how do you accept or reject a hypothesis. So, if I said the suppose you can find out the z value right now if the z value that you have found out you compare it against the table value. Now, table value at what confidence level that you have to decide earlier. Now, why earlier? The point is if you do not decide your confidence level earlier from the beginning such as let us say 95 percent or 99 percent, then the researcher might change his mind if he does not get the desired result. So, that is why it is always you have to decide it fix it from the beginning ok. So, z value let us say at 95 percent at 95 percent for a I had also said for a two tail test and one tail test both the values would differ. For a two tail test may be the, the rejection zones are spread at two ends right. So, at 95 percent it becomes 1.96 right. So, the area is basically if you how do you check it now you can you can go to the normal distribution the table and look at the value of 0 0.475. Now, why it is 0 0.475? Now, 0 0.475 into 2 is basically nothing but 95 percent. So, if my two tail are taking 0 0.25, 0 0.25, so I have 0 0.475 here, 0 0.475 here. But if it is only a one tail or a one uh, tail test, then it is uh, it will look something like this, ok. That this side may be suppose I am not, I'm not getting the direction suppose I am not interested in the left I am only interested in the right. So, the rejection will lie all the 5 percent will lie here ok. So, this portion is 0 0.5 as it is this becomes 0 0.45. So, to do this if you if you want to check the area under the curve. So, the if you look at 0 0.45 at the table you will find that the area under the curve or the z value sorry is the is not 1.96 now it is only 1.64 ok. So, once you have calculated then you see ki this if this is the acceptance zone right. Now, whether your value falls this side to this cutoff value or this side if it is falling this side your null hypothesis is accepted right, but if it is falling somewhere this side away from the cutoff value then it is rejected ok. This is one I also said ki there is something called a p value. Now, a p value in the last session only I told you p value is the probability value if this p value is less than 0 0.05 in your case right. What is this p value basically it says what is the chance of the, the value of your calculated value falling at an extreme zone or the or the extreme ends ok. So, if it is less than 0 0.05 then you reject the null hypothesis right. If it is less than 0 0.05 if the p value is less than 0 0.05 you reject if it is less less than 0 0.05 you reject the null hypothesis. But suppose it is suppose it is more than more than 0 0.05 at a 95 percent confidence level please remember this if, if it is 95 if it is 99 the value will change then you will accept the null hypothesis right accept the null. So, it is a probability. So, is it the is the probability of falling is within the 5 percent or is less than the that if it is less then reject it ok as good as that. Now, let us look at this. So, uh, uh, so I am not getting into this. So, you have to calculate I have already told you. 
So, right, if the probability less than 0 0.05, the calculator observes z will be beyond plus or minus 1.96, as I said. Now, this is how it looks, the cutoff value, right. So, this is the uh, area where you are talking, we were just talking about, okay. Now, this is the 5 steps which I uh, told you at the beginning, right. Now, uh, let us see what has been done. Let us go to the calculation. Now, mu is equal to 2.7. In other words, in null hypothesis, we are saying that the population mean and the sample mean are same, equal, right. So, there is no difference, okay. Now, the sample of 117 comes from the population that has a GP of 2.7, right. The difference between 2.7 and 3 is trivial and caused by random chance. This is what we have to prove, okay. And what is an alternate hypothesis? Now, mu is not equal to 2.7, right? Okay. Now, let us uh, look at the calculation. Now, what is it doing? The sampling distribution is z, right? Now, okay, one thing you have to understand. Now, whether it will be two tail test or one tail test. So, the mean is equal to the population or not equal to the population, there will be two tail, right? Because it can be less than, it can be greater than. So, any difference with the probability less than the alpha is rare and will cause us to reject the null hypothesis okay so uh, uh, let us let us go to the what is the formula as i have already uh, done this formula many a times so z for large samples which is greater than or equal to 100 is z is equal to x bar sample mean minus the population mean upon the standard error or sigma divided by root over of n n is the sample size so through this also you can calculate the sample size as i told earlier but suppose your sample deviation is not known. Suppose the sample deviation, the standard deviation of the population is not known. In that case, your formula will slightly change. That means, if you do not have the population standard deviation, you have to take the sample standard deviation. And when you take the sample standard deviation, which was 0.7, if I am not wrong, if I remember, it was 0.7, you have to divide it by a degree of freedom of not n by n minus 1 right root over of not n by n minus 1 but so this is the only change right now in this case in this case let us go back and see so what it has done so to test the hypothesis he has taken 3 minus 2.7 divided by sample because uh, he, you don't know in this case in our case with the population let us go back if you have forgotten i will show you i think i'll show you okay so if you see we did not have the population standard deviation, it was not given to us, we had a sample, right. So, we are using this, okay. So, so 117.7 divided by root over of 117 minus 1. So, how much is the value now? 4.62. Now, this 4.62 is obviously our 95 percent value was 1.96. So, 4.62 would co come obviously this way, somewhere here, right, 4.62. So, if it is there automatically you can understand that it is to be the null hypothesis would be rejected okay now the obtained z score fell in the critical region so we reject the h0 if the h0 were true a sample outcome of 3 would be unlikely therefore the h0 is false and must be rejected now what is the conclusion education measures have a gpa that is significantly different from the general student body so earlier our hypothesis was ki there is no difference between the education measures and the normal students but now you are saying ki no the null hypothesis has been rejected and actually this is what we wanted that null hypothesis should be rejected and there is a difference between the uh, two groups okay <coughs> so, this is how it looks like 4.62. So, this is 1.96, right. So, we are saying it is falling somewhere here, okay. So, summary is uh, already I have explained uh, the GP of education measures is significantly different from the general body. So, uh, this is all, right. This is all we are going to do. So, uh, we rejected the S0 and concluded that the difference was significant, right, okay, fine. Now, this is a rule of thumb. If the test statistic is in the critical region, alpha is 0 0.5, which is beyond 0, point, reject the high 0, the difference is significant, right. Suppose it falls in the critical region, that is in between 1.96 to minus 1.96, that means what? Please, if you remember, I had told you, we never say, we never ever should say that we have accepted the null hypothesis. We always say we failed to reject the null hypothesis. So, understand the difference. 
in our tests we generally use colloquially we say for a normal inter, uh, you know interpretation we say we accept the null hypothesis but that is the wrong interpretation we should say that we failed to reject the null hypothesis. So, here we will say if something falls in between plus 1.96 and minus 1.96 right. So, we will say that the difference is not significant and it is only a matter of chance that this time it has happened ok. So, uh, this is uh, uh, the uh, students uh, distribute tree distribution for small samples is also there uh, I can uh, show you this is what we had done right. So, this is the formula for a t test which is like which was similar to the one when uh, you did not have the population standard deviation right. So, this is uh, all these are some other problems I had brought, but I think you can do it later on right. So, uh, maybe in the maybe in next class or something we will continue this session ok. Thanks for the, this session we will meet in the next session where we will continue with the maybe the T and Z we will just formulate and uh, we will get into a third condition where <coughs> we have uh, more than uh, 2 right till now we have only worked with uh, one sample we have not been able to even do the two sample uh, and uh, other things. So, we will maybe continue in the next session but I hope that you are clarity uh, has been there ki what is a null what is an alternate and how do you check the null and alternate. So, this is what uh, is for this session thank you so much.